Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. I feel real strong about what I'm saying to you right now because you're getting tested and you will get tested and I really 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 want you to pass the test so you can have the testimony. So you can stand up and tell somebody else. Let your test become your testimony. Everybody likes the testimony. We overcome the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And it's good to be able to testify to the veracity and the truth of God's word. Life sometimes can get tough. Anybody agree with that? All right. Nobody ever ends up with a testimony How many of you love hearing a good testimony? Nobody ever has a testimony if they haven't had a test. And so we're going to be tested. And not only will the enemy try to test us, but God himself will test us. David even prayed for God to test him. I don't pray that prayer real often, but, you know. <laughs> I mean, David prayed, oh God, try me, test me. See if there's any wicked thing in me. Wow, that's nerve. <laughs> We love to hear great testimonies. But if we don't pass our tests, we'll never have a testimony. Some of you wonder why you keep going around and around the same mountain all the time, all the time. Well, there's a little something you need to know about God. You never flunk out in his school You just keep getting to take the same test over and over and over until you pass them. <laughs> Amen? And then even after you pass them, occasionally you'll get a little refresher course. <laughs> just to check and see if you're still where you need to be in that subject. Well, we love to hear and read about Noah, Joseph, Abraham, Moses, Moses Daniel, Ruth, Esther, Peter, Paul. But would you have wanted to have been them? <laughs> oh, it must, wow. Must be great to have Joyce's life. <laughs> oh, honey. <laughs> well, we won't. Yeah, um, yes, I have a great life, but you don't do this and not pay a price to do it. Amen. Would we, you know, we think, oh, I, I, man, it must be awesome. Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Wow. Man. Moses parted the Red Sea. Wow. <laughs> None of these people were making their own choices in life. They each had a plan that was suddenly interrupted by God. <laughs> Maybe some of you have plans And God's been trying to interrupt them. And you're not letting him. And so things are not going so well for you. Because you know, when God decides to get in the middle of something, <laughs> come on now. Most people have an invisible sign hanging on their life. God can see it, but other people can't. It says, do not disturb Those are signs you can hang on hotel doors, but you don't get to put one on your life. If you're going to hang out with God, you better get ready to get interrupted. You can have a good plan every day, but that doesn't mean you're going to get to do what you planned, because if God needs you, you've got to be on call. I'm sure Esther had a plan for her life, and it probably wasn't to take a chance on getting killed by doing things that you normally don't get by with. These people were placed in situations that they'd never encountered. You know, when God asks you to do something, telling him, well, I've never done that before, that don't, that don't bother God. <laughs> so they were placed in situations they'd never encountered, 
and in the natural were not equipped to handle. They were alone many times in their pain and their tragedy, misunderstood and criticized. In these men and women, we see things like the death of loved ones, persecution of the righteous, famine, prison, rejection, abandonment, abuse, injustice, misunderstanding. How many of you still want to be used by God? What? Where's the hands? I saw one that went about like this. You know, I'm going to tell you the truth. They had to be willing to die. They had to learn to love unlovely people, <laughs> have long-suffering impatience, get criticized and accused, long periods of waiting for God's deliverance. But we also see in the lives of these people that great fruit was produced and that God used them in amazing ways. He used Esther to save a whole nation, one little young girl in her 20s because she was willing to lay aside her plan and step out and do what she felt like God was telling her to do. Now, I know all of you are not called into full-time ministry, but I can tell you this affects every single person because there's not a person in this room that God doesn't challenge you and ask you to do things that you feel like are more than what you can handle. I don't care if it's nothing other than talking to your next door neighbor about Jesus. Nobody gets a testimony without a test. If you're gonna hang out with God, endurance, the word endurance, <laughs> a Bible word, endurance, is a must. We have to learn how to endure, how to not run away from hard things. We have to learn that the only way to get through is to go through. <laughs> Amen? And so, I have my own little definition for endurance, and I like it. I believe that endurance means to outlast the devil. In other words, however long you want to aggravate me, that's just how long I'm going to stick with God and not quit and not give up. You go ahead and wear yourself out trying to wear me out, but I am not going to give up. Amen? And I'll tell you, if you don't have anything going for you except being bullheaded enough to say, I am never going to give up, you'll end up getting the victory. I've got a sign in my office that says, never, never, never give up. I almost brought it this weekend just to show you. Don't give up. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. And that scripture is for every single person here. We all get tired of it. We all get tired of waiting. We all get tired of the devil picking on us. We all get tired of the stuff that happens to us. But only the ones that refuse to give up are the ones that will come out and be part of the group that parts the Red Sea and does the kind of things that these guys did, men and women. Come on. Endurance means to abide, to remain under, to be patient. <laughs> patient. And patience is not just an ability to wait. You're going to wait whether you like it or not. But it's how we act while we wait. Patience is a fruit of the Spirit that keeps us sweet and kind. Come on. Patience is a fruit of the Spirit that keeps us sweet and kind. Patience is a fruit of the Spirit. <laughs> Come on, how much can you go through personally and still be nice to other people? <laughs> oh my gosh, I've come a long way. 42 years ago, if I would go to the grocery store and the clerk was new, <laughs> I mean, I could have my rhinestone Jesus pin on and everything. 
But I tell you what, the fruit wasn't pretty. <sighs> now, 42 years later, not two days, <laughs> come on, now 42 years later, and thankfully it didn't take me the whole 42 years, but it did take about four or five. And now if we got a new clerk and I can tell she's getting nervous because she's having trouble, I'll just say, hey, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You'll get it. You'll end up being great at this job. Everybody makes mistakes. I'm not in that big of a hurry. I can actually, I actually can now think more of somebody else than I do myself. It took 42 years, but... I'm good with that now. Now, you know, there's other things that I'm maybe not so patient with, but I've got the slow clerk thing down. <laughs> Patience, endurance, outlast the devil. Learn that everything in life is not going to be your way, and God expects you to be sweet anyway. Christians are supposed to be nice. Did you know that? <laughs> Maybe that's the revelation for the day. I don't know. What'd you learn at the conference today? Joyce said we're supposed to be nice. We're supposed to like each other. Hebrews 6, 12, so that you will not be spiritually sluggish but will instead be imitators of those who through faith lean on God with absolute trust and confidence in Him and in His power and by patient endurance, even when suffering, are now inheriting the promises. So if you're in this building today and you, are, you feel you have victory in your life, that doesn't mean everything is perfect, but you feel that you've come through and you've got a good measure of victory in your life, it's because at some point you endured. Come on. It's at some point you stopped running away from the hard things and you learned to just run to them and get it over with. Come on. I'd have to say that I've got a good measure of victory in my life right now. It's certainly not perfect, but I'm pretty happy most of the time, pretty content, pretty peaceful. I've come a long way. But I tell you, I had to learn to stop running from things and just say, God, just do whatever you got to do and just get it over with. And if you have to, just tie me to the altar and don't let me get away from you because I don't want to stay the same. There's two kinds of pain, the pain of change and the pain of staying the same. And staying the same should scare you more than changing. They endured and they're now inheriting the promises. Hebrews 10, 36. For you have need of patient endurance to bear up under difficult circumstances without compromising so that when you have carried out the will of God, you may receive and enjoy to the full what is promised. How many of you are seeing these things? We go through to get through and the reward is always on the other side. But we're going to be tested, we're going to be tried, and we're going to need to be proven. Would you lose your job rather than lie for your boss? Well, there wasn't enough clapping on that, that's for sure. <laughs> now I'm really concerned. We may have to stay a while. There's no telling us how many times people are tested way back here somewhere. And if they would have done the right thing back there, 
now they would be enjoying a life that would be amazing. I've told this story before, wasn't part of this message, but gotta do it to make the point. Years ago, I worked for a wholesale fish company and I was the bookkeeper and he wanted me to basically help him steal some money from a customer because we owed them money. And I sent out the statements every month and these people had like a 300 and some odd dollar credit balance because they'd accidentally paid a bill twice. And so he would look over all the statements before I'd send them out. And he brought that one out to me and he said, I want you to uh, put a debit on this account and make it have a zero balance. In other words, he didn't want to send them the money because they had a credit on their account. Well, I knew right away that it was wrong to do, but I went home, I slept on it. Well, I didn't sleep actually. And I wasn't, I wasn't even really what I would call a real strong Christian back then, but I, I loved God, I went to church. I had some moral fiber and I knew that it was, I just knew that I couldn't do it. Dave and I both worked in the same area. We only had one car, so that meant that, you know, my transportation was good. There was a lot of reasons not to lose that job. And I was petrified if I went in and told him that I wouldn't do what he asked me to do, that he would fire me. And so I went in real early the next morning. I made my mind up. Now just listen. I made my mind up I was going to go with God even if I lost my job. Come on, I want you all to hear that. I made my mind up that I was going to go with God even if I lost my job. And there was a lot of things I didn't have the answer to if I did lose my job, but I knew they had to go with God. Come on now, are you willing to lose a friend if that's what you have to do in order to go with God? Are you willing to be made fun of if that's what you have to do? in order to go with God? Are you willing to be judged and criticized as the religious nut in your office in order to go with God? Come on, I, I'm asking some serious questions. It's time that we make our minds up. We're not gonna compromise what we know is right just to be accepted by everybody else or to keep a job or whatever the case may be. And there's no telling us how many Christians today make compromises in their life just to be accepted by the world or to keep a good paying job or something like that. And here's what happens. Now, thankfully, God gave me the grace to pass that test. I went in real early the next morning and I just went in and I was shaking like crazy and I said, you know, you may not understand this, but I'm a Christian and I do not feel that I can balance this statement out and make it have a zero balance because I would feel like that I was stealing their money if I did that. And I said, I need my job, don't want to lose my job, but I can't do it. Well, he got red in the face and he sputtered and blah, 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 and just said, well, just get out there and go to work. And all day long, I kept expecting to get fired. And finally, just about five minutes before quitting time, he came out and he kind of slammed that statement down on my desk and he said, well, just send them a check. And so, long story short, I kept getting promoted in that company until I was right beneath him. I didn't have the education for the job. Half the time, I didn't even know how to do what I was doing. But God gave me the grace to do it. And I, I'll tell you this, and I believe this. If I would have compromised back then, I don't think I'd be here today telling you this story. I've got a testimony because I passed the test. Come on now. Don't give up what God has got planned for you, the amazing life that God has got planned for you just to compromise with somebody who wants you to sin to keep them happy. Go with God if it costs you everybody else in the whole world, you go with God. 
because when all this is over, there's going to be nothing but God. Come on. And I, you know, I feel real strong about what I'm saying to you right now because you're getting tested and you will get tested. And I really, really, really want you to pass the test so you can have the testimony. So you can stand up and tell somebody else, go with God. Don't let the devil steal God's plan for your life by some silly compromise. Now that doesn't mean that you can't be forgiven for sin. God can forgive us, but he can only use people in a great way that he can trust in a great way. God's gotta be able to trust the people that he wants to use, not to cave in if it means a little bit of discomfort. Well, you know, when you're being tested, the only way to get through is to go through. I always say the only way out is through. You can't run away from things. It's not easy, but with God, all things are possible. When I first came to this place, this was a deserted uh, place with huge trees, rocks. It was like a den for most of the people. India is a heel arm land. In veel gebieden is er geen toegang tot drinkwater. Veel van deze plaatsen zijn onbewoond. When we dug the borewell, uh, then people got the news. They knew that. Uh, there is no water available in the area. That's how people started coming and started living in this area. Al meer dan 30 jaar zijn wij van Hand of Hope, het christelijk zendingwerk van Joyce Meyer Ministries, actief in India. Tot op heden hebben we honderden waterbronnen en kerken mogen bouwen. There are many wells in this village, about three or four, but each well is dedicated to one community or one caste or one religion. One other religion is not allowed to go there to fetch the water. But we drilled a well outside the compound of the church. So it is open for 24 hours. People can get water anytime they want. There were about 30 to 40 people attending the Sunday worship service prior to having digging the bore well. We have now around uh, over 500 people attending the Sunday worship service. Yes, we plant a seed, we get an opportunity to come align ourselves with the pastor. He gets to build a community of faith, find new leaders and go plant other churches, which is really the great story. And as our partners uh, and their faithful giving, uh, we can see that which is really the great story, isn't it? It is such a privilege to be with you on this day. And on behalf of Joyce Meyer Ministry and Hand of Hope, we are pleased to present this water well. We pray that this well will be a benefit to everybody around. And let this be a testament to God's love. Een dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen op joyce-meijer.nl slash overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed. Het is het waard.